Greetings gamers, I am Mute Dog the Gamer and today I'm going to be sharing just a couple of uh, tips that I gained from playing this demo of the Trials of Mana. I know that there are way, 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 way better content out there that um, goes more in depth about uh, more tips and tricks that uh, you guys can get. So this video isn't for anybody to kind of critique me on, it's just certain things that I found and different elements that I found in the game to kind of help me along in the journey. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. So um, without further ado, here are some tips that I came across. Alright, so the first tip that I have that I'm pretty sure everybody's already familiar with is that you have a plethora of different characters with different attributes, um, different street strengths, play styles, a um, little bit of like their role in the game and whatnot. So just kind of experiment with each and every character to see who fits your play styles. You get a party of three that you can go on your entire adventure with. So just take your time and um, choose anybody who fits your play style. That's my first tip. My second tip is that if you want to uh, go to the first boss battle with a full party squad, then you want to make sure that you pick, let me see where she's at, Charlotte, this little girl right here, you want to make sure that she is companion number two. Reason being is because when you are on your way to see the Priest of Light who is in Wendell, you will come across companion number one right when you get to the barrier and right after you meet up with companion number one companion number two which is Charlotte will be that third party and you have a full squad roster there so an example would be that I would choose Duran the name's Duran Angela I'm Angela princess of all and lastly I'll choose Charlotte I'm Charlotte so if you pick them in that order, just like how I explained to you before, you will go into the first dungeon and also the first boss battle with a full three-man squad. So that's the uh, first two tips that I wanted to share with you guys. My next tip is to make sure that you go okay. ahead and collect these treasure chests, break vases, and I'm pretty sure you've already seen them um, during your adventures uh, on this demo, is that there are these yellow glowing orbs. Um, kind of make sure you go a little bit out of your way to make sure you collect them. Um, they're filled with currency. Um, items like candy and other healing items, medicinal herbs and different things like that. Breaking the vases, especially these um, green ones that restores health. You just want to make sure that, um, you know, second. that just like any other um, JRPG, you're collecting these items. Because um, once you are collecting these items, as you're collecting these items, you'll come across some that are these item seeds, which I will explain in the next tip. Now for another tip that I have in mind is that in these ends, you see these magic pots? You want to go ahead and use these item seeds in these magic pots to um, help it to kind of grow and level up. So you want to go ahead and just plant these right away. As you can see, my, my pot on the far right corner is level two. And as you uh, continue to uh, use these magic pots, they'll produce more and more rare and useful items. And as you journey further into the game, you'll come across these triple question mark seeds where they will produce certain items or even weapons that you can use for your characters to change their classes later on. But that's more in depth of when the actual game comes out. In order for you to kind of progress with leveling up that magic pot for the end, you want to get about 15 item seeds for it to, um, to level up to the next level. And the way that you find the item seeds is those yellow glowing orbs. And the good thing about those orbs as well too is that even if you do pick them up, like you collect them in the area, you go away for a little bit, 
and you go back into that same area where you found those yellow orbs, they'll respawn just like the enemies how they respawn. Um, once you leave leave that area and come back, those yellow orbs will respawn will respawn as well too. So it's not necessarily a lost cause if you don't get them right then and there. So that's just a useful tip that I picked up on um, in my in my uh, gameplay of the demo is that even though you miss the yellow glowing orbs the first time, they do respawn back. So um, it's not a lost cause if you happen to just pass them up or you already collect them in that area. The next tip that I have to offer is that any time, or actually rather every time you enter into a new town, make sure you check out the weaponry and armory shop, mainly because they Welcome. have um, to browse. better weapons and armor that you can use. As you can see here, I already um, equipped them on to Duran and Angela already. <laughs> Come again. And the armory, it boosts your defense, whereas the weaponry, it boosts your attack and even magic spells. So make sure that anytime you visit the new town, you check out these shops, especially in your first run of the demo when you first go to Astoria. Um, as soon as you go to Astoria, just make sure that you uh, go Welcome. ahead and check out their weapon Lots and armory store. They usually have like an iron sword for Duran and um, some other <laughs> armor again. equipment that you can equip onto him before Astoria gets destroyed. So that's another thing to kind of look into as well. The next tip that I want to talk about is the strategy. What I like to do for each one of my companions is that I like to set their class strikes all the way to 100. Reason being is because the game does a very, very uh, great job at explaining how the combat system works, as well as movement, um, surveying the area, different things like that. But one thing that I kind of had to find out on my own is that when you finish off an enemy with a class strike, you actually gain ex experience points for when you finish them off with a class strike which is a lot of help in grinding um, throughout this game so for me personally I just like to have the class strikes all the way up and the uh, the AI um, companions they do a good job at landing them and unexpectedly I get the extra uh, experience points when they do finish off an enemy so that was another tip that I wanted to share the next one is the training as the game already explained is that you can allocate certain points to certain attributes to strengthen uh, the uh, different abilities of characters and as you see here on the right side of the screen each um, character comes with a certain ability that they can use into their utility so for instance with, with Hawkeye I increase his luck points to um, get that second ability which is lucky fine which enables him or for that matter anybody can use this um, ability that the item drop rate increased by 5% so um, it's a good way for him to collect uh, uh, different items and even rarer items especially those triple question mark seeds that I mentioned earlier in, um, that you want to be on the lookout for he's really good at tracking items um, Charlotte for her I went on ahead and increased her spirit so that way once I fight the boss I can go ahead and use that healing light spell after I fight the first boss so she's another reason why it's um, it's important that you include her in your team pretty much early on or as that third companion so that way she can use that spell right away My last tip for this game is mainly just to enjoy the game. Um, this game has a lot to offer as far as variety and characters and different plots of the story to see how they turn out in the end. So mostly just enjoy the game and play it your own way. I'm just giving out tips and things that I that I found very useful and I'm just sharing it with everybody. It may not be 100% accurate and everybody has their own play style or anything like that. So, like I mentioned earlier, it's not a video to critique that I missed this or that I missed that. 
but just play it your own way. And like I said, just try different characters to see who you like. This is, is a JRPG, a good recommendation. You can have a frontliner tank, um, such as Kevin or Duran, a hard hitting mage like Angela, or physical damage dealer like Hawkeye or in Ruby, and a healer like Charlotte. Since it is a JRPG. So just wanted to share those uh, little tidbits of um, of that information with you guys and let me know in the comment section what you guys plan to use in your uh in your copy of the game when it comes out you know there's some things that we can both learn from each other so just let me know in the comment section uh what you guys think and make sure to uh rate like subscribe don't like it doesn't matter to me just uh make sure you just uh uh, just stay tuned for upcoming videos and thank you so much for taking the time out to view this video I really appreciate that? it and I'll see you guys later